Okay, so the final stage now is to um, get this model actually doing something more interesting in an XNA project. Uh, so the starting point at this stage, I think, is to create a new project. So I've just flipped across to Visual Studio, and we're going to create a new project, uh, which will be a Windows game, uh, which we'll call um, XSI Demo. And create that. Okay, and the basic uh, starting point for all anything that's going to use the XSI uh, modeling uh, output is we need to use the content importer that they provided and also there's some runtime um, supporting functions uh, which are both provided in a DLL. So we go first of all, this is our project, we go to our projects references and in there we're going to add a reference which we will browse to. And when you've installed this, it'll rather depend where you've installed XSI Mod Tool 2, but um, basically the default is to be C Soft Image Mod Tool Add ons down the bottom here XNA GSE Application References, and there's the various versions of XNA. Hopefully, there'll be a, an XNA 4 one soon, but 3.1. And in the main project, we need this runtime. But also, under the content uh, project, uh, importer project, we need to add um, both those um, DLLs as well. So same again, uh, soft image, mod tool, add-ons, application, references, 3.1, both of these. So shift select both those. OK, so our references have both been added. Now, uh, obviously, in the main uh, game, we also need to add our using statement. So we're going to be using XNA, oh, XSI XNA runtime, uh, which is going to be handy. Uh, and in the contents uh, here, let's create some um, a bit of a fold structure here. So we'll call this models. Okay, and that's our main. Uh, location where we're going to start putting the things from uh, soft image uh, and essentially it's going to be two things it's going to be a texture and the model itself okay so I'll cut back to uh, soft image now and what we've got here is a model which if you recall comprises two different materials but it could be as m any m number of materials it's a single mesh but with uh, some components in it but again it could be um, if you have multiple meshes you need to collapse those to single mesh first which uh, I'm not going to cover in this particular topic but maybe in a future tutorial if there's enough interest uh, but what we really want to do is end up with a single uh, texture map and that's really important because a lot of the graphics cards that we're going to be dealing with will require that our texture maps are powers of two in size so that's 128 by 128 256, 256, 12, etc and when you're modeling you don't want to be worried about that you can grab images from anywhere and plonk them on but at the end we need to want we want to end up with a compliant texture image to map onto this model so that's what we're going to have a go at and xsi has got a brilliant tool for that select the object go to um, property render map and what we can do is have xsi sort that all out for us so i'm going to create a 512 by 512 really, i'm going to be really extravagant it's probably a bit naughty. Crank that up. Uh, and we're going to create a render map which is effectively going to look at all the polygons and find out how they're texture mapped. Go read back the texture and create a new image. Uh, and to do that, we're going to create a new projection where all of our um, polygons have unique UVs. Okay. Uh, no, I don't. So uh, the. Um, Choose our file format from this drop-down list. I'll do a PNG just for ease of use. Choose the location it's going to go to. I'm going to stick mine, if you remember, projects. Oh, no, desktop. Demo. Demo. Content. Models. Right, so we'll just stick it in there. Uh, click OK. And then it doesn't really do it straight away. You have to regenerate the maps. OK, and that's because once you set these properties up, they get us sort of attached to a model, and when we're mocking about, we can continually regenerate the maps without uh, losing these settings. Because I'll show you in a second that this render map appears as an item in the Explorer. Okay, so it takes a few seconds to do that, depending on the complexity. 
Uh, I've just realized that I've done this with illumination. But anyway, let's have a look at that first. So we go to our demo. Demo content models. And here is our render map. OK, and you can see that it's taken all of the images and it's laid them all out in unique UV space. You'll also notice something that I was going to save as a little bonus, but I've done it by accident. Um, it's applied lighting shading here to the images. They weren't obviously in our original textures, but it exercise looked at the model in the lit environment in the scene and applied that lighting directly. In this case, we don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to do a separate discussion about that later on in the context of making a game level where you've got lots of static lighting and that makes a lot more sense. But for our moving model, we probably aren't going to want to statically light it. So in I've just changed that to surface color map only there in this drop down. And let's regenerate that again. Just close that off and regenerate that map again. Uh, but that lighting, baking in lighting is fantastic. You can also choose from this map options um, to bake in um, things like the uh, ambient occlusion map which is fantastic ambient occlusions is really cool and you can separate the illumination out if you want to have a more complicated shader that applies the lighting with a different blend um, method this th is the business it's really good so let's have a look again at our um, image this time so what we're expecting this time is for it to be uh, unshaded with light which is great so there we go. So we've got a single model. It's 512 by 512, so it's completely compliant now for our uh, game. Drop back into XSI. Uh, but this model isn't using that texture at the moment. So what we need to do is Control 8, uh, 7, sorry, to bring up our uh, material manager, create a new material, go and find our image, which is in the correct location now off the desktop. Demo, demo, content, models, render map. OK. And then, in fact, we can delete these old textures. I just want to make sure I have, before I do anything else, and this is always worth doing, I'm going to make sure that I've selected, whoops, selected my model and frozen any modeling changes on it. Uh, but then I'm going to delete the old materials from it and drop the new material on. OK, and it all looks a bit horrible at the moment. Uh, but that is purely because we need to um, set up the correct projection map, which we created, if you remember, at the time we output the model. OK, so what I've done there is at the time when I created the render map, I asked it to make a UV, unique UV projection, which I'm, I just left as the default name. So I'm just popping that back on and our model is all good. So that's a single model now with a single texture image. Uh, which is all compliant and we're looking really nice to go. So my final uh, part of the jigsaw puzzle now is to um, uh, create the uh, hierarchical structure we need for export. OK, so I'm going to go F8 again. We've just at the moment got a poly mesh, but we really need to sit that poly mesh inside a model. So I choose model, new model, and we'll call this the missile model. And you'll notice because I had the cylinder selected, it's already popped it inside. If you don't have the object selected, you can drag things inside this explorer. It works really just like a file explorer view. Um, and that's it. Um, to get it out to an XNA um, file, we just really need to know the path. And we add that with a nice little helper tool um, plugin that's on the, that you get with um, Mod Tool 7.5. So what I'm going to do here is just um, convert to an XNA model with that model selected. And really what it's done is it's added in this XNA asset asset field here, okay, which is just a path um, to our file. But if we select the model and we ask to publish, it'll, it'll ask us to fill that path in anyway. So here we go again, desktop, demo, demo, content, models, okay, and we'll call this rather unimaginatively missile, okay, and it's gone. OK, and if we have a look in our model folder now, we have a missile.xsi file. Game on, as they say. Models uh, in my um, project now add the existing item, which is a bit shocking at first because you go in here first and you'll find that it doesn't appear. And that's because, um, unhappily for us, we try and guess what those files should be. And of course, it doesn't know about XSI files in the dropdown. So set that to all files and then you'll find your XSI model.
and in it comes and I'll just check by right clicking on project properties sorry that it's found the correct importers which it should do automatically provided you've um, included your references correctly uh, if you've forgotten then you have to go and put the references in afterwards you might need to come and manually correct those and you're after the crosswalk importer and the crosswalk model processor that's it okay now I want to make this look a bit flash so I'm going to do a slightly uh, blue Peter moment now and add in an existing project uh, which is just a load of helper tools which will allow us to not worry too much uh, about boilerplate code here but um, in essence uh, the model that we've got there now will just run with uh, any of the standard code that you've seen on the Games Creator Club that supports um, the basic effect so we haven't done anything clever there it'll all just run with basic effect which is a nice way to get started uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a few components from my library here uh, which make life a lot easier so I'm going to add a um, a new mapped uh, oh I've forgotten to add the reference to my library that's why I can't find anything excuse me so uh, references add a reference to this project there we go sorry about that and then we should find now new maps controller okay so what that is basically is a, is a service that I've written that uh, passes that uh, deals with the Xbox controller and the keyboard this one is a first person camera and we'll have a uh, new drawable model which is going to be our models slash missile and we should find uh, we're largely there obviously I can't see a damn thing, there we are ah ok so I've got the wrong projection <gasps> right so what I need to do is just uh, close that down come back here let's just bin the wrong projection which is under cylinder polymesh cluster let's just get rid of that one and republish my model this is now showing you the nice uh, integration you see having done nothing else from the programmers point of view a game artist can he said confidently correct oops my camera needs to be a bit better the model okay and there we have it rendering in XSI um, it's a little bit boring let's add in a um, skybox And I've uh, got a couple of those kicking around. Let's add in sky boxes. I guess alien could be quite a good one for a spaceship type thing. Extra bracket needed. Aha, uh -huh. now we're starting to look a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so there is our um, X and A shaded model from scratch. Um, running inside the co uh, XNA game studio um, the rendering process is just literally um, all I've used is a, a little wrapper there my drawable model which just looks for the basic effect inside a model mesh and renders it so there shouldn't be anything um, difficult there